It is February 17th, 2021. Hi, my name is Court Boyce, Curry County, Oregon Commissioner. If I may, I'd like to give you a 2020 Curry local government perspective. As commissioner, we represent everyone from Agnes to Langless, Port Orford to Pistol River, Flores Lake to Cape Farello, Gold Beach to Sixes, Mariel to Brookings, Winchuck to Wedderburn. Of course, you'd never forget Carpenterville. 27 rural make that distinct, almost frontier precincts. First, may I talk about our Wild Rivers Coast, geographically the most western part point of the entire continental western U.S. Note, our Rogue River Siskiyou National Forest is the most rugged, the most unique, the most wild, the most beautiful in North America. The Upper Elk River to Secret Beach, our Oregon Redwoods to Cape Sebastian, Otter Point to the headwaters of the Chetco River, Wild Horse Lookout to Harris Beach, Harbor Hills to Flores Lake, the Kalmyopsis Wilderness to Blacklock, and certainly our mighty and most famous Rogue River. Yes, we are very fortunate to call Oregon our home and to live in the U.S. of A. Curry County and our way of life deserves to be defended. This is my fifth January as a Curry Commissioner and my first opportunity in offering a State of the County Address. It is truly humbling. You could say as a loyal opposition because in my four years, I always seem to be that minority commissioner. No pretensions here. Our Curry government in 2020 honestly was terribly divided. Even in the commissioner's job description interpretation often brought disagreement. In the last four years, I've continually opposed inappropriate spending and a growing bureaucracy within our county government. However, 2021 can and must start a new and important era. I remain with solid resolve. Curry has so many opportunities to lead and will. Hope and help now with full-time commissioners, a much more productive board. In our fabulous southwest corner of Oregon, we have three very well-managed cities, three distinctly unique and diverse Oregon coastal ports, four school district, districts that make us all proud, five of the very best law enforcement agencies found anywhere, 14 of the most dedicated volunteer fire departments you'll find in our state. Our Curry Healthcare is constantly improving and moving forward not to mention our award-winning libraries and several coastal tribes well represented in our county. So looking back, Commissioner Pash and myself said goodbye to Commissioner Sue Gold and welcome new Curry Commissioner John Herzog. 2020 was quite a journey, a grueling and long marathon, when Oregonians felt the powerful impacts experiencing the incredible collision of the highly contagious coronavirus and the worst wildfire season ever in our state's history. A most strange and difficult year, but also a time of choosing. So many hurting people in our neighborhoods. Each and every life impacted by the virus here, as told, usually either with a heartwarming or sometimes heart-wrenching, but all stories we need to hear and know. Personally, I've been inspired by the people who stood up and stepped up. We've seen our kids suffer, our schools met with setbacks, yet have carried a very diligent and positive attitude forward to overcome. Now though the joy and relief in seeing school buses in our communities finally back on their routes, so much we've learned. We won't grow weary. Tragically and in spite of our six Curry citizens lost, 2,100 in Oregon lost to this virus and almost 500,000 deaths in our country. Can I ask for a moment of silence? Thank you. Here's one story from a local businessman, a reminder and wise challenge to us all. George Rhodes, uh, restaurant owner in Brookings, Oregon. Or the restaurant owns me, I guess, <laughs> I should say. That and my creditors now. 
hard act to follow. Um, and I know exactly where he's coming from because I've been spending my days in the trenches too lately. I think it's best for the commissioners to consider their options and certainly the fact that the governor has made some threats recently about what would happen if the counties decided to go against her rules. Um, that's concerning. But I've given up my freedoms enough. I don't need the governor who can't get the unemployment department to send unemployment checks to my employees to try to micromanage my business any longer. It's killing me. And it's killing my staff. The first shutdown, we had 26 employees. When we opened back up, we opened up with 12 because we could only seat 25% of our seating capacity. That's the last time we closed down, we only had eight come back. Mm. So I may be running my restaurant with just myself and my wife if we ever do open back up. Yeah. This is critical. And I'll leave you with one thing that Thomas Jefferson said back in the 1800s. One man with courage is a minority. If you believe that is a majority, I'm sorry. If you believe that, then three men with courage is a super majority. I encourage you to pass this resolution that's going to be before you on Wednesday. Thank you. May I offer from a personal perspective, one of the biggest frustrations I've had in my entire adult life has been to watch the state and federal government in the CARES Relief funding make our restaurants and small business employers such a low priority, knowing they so badly need and deserve help, and through no fault of their own. Then to the specific funds, 600 million that back in July was spe specifically designed to come to our Oregon counties. In the final tally, we barely received one third of that the federal government and U.S. Treasury intended. We pushed and pushed and continued to lobby and persuade, working to right this wrong. Ditto for future coronavirus relief funding that is likely coming. I'd like to tell you a story. 20 years ago, I met a very special man. Great pleasure. Andy Maurer, professional football player, back in the 60s and 70s, he was a left tackle for the Minnesota Vikings. He protected the blind side of a couple of famous right-handed quarterbacks, some of whom you may recall, Fran Tarkington and Craig Morton. Andy told me in spring camp when the rookies arrived, the long-time veterans quickly learned who could handle the pressure, who would team up, and the word he used, who was unflappable. I've been here almost every day for 11 months because that's what I promised. In working through these very intense times, I learned who could handle the pressure, who teamed up. I've worked with and been around a lot of unflappable, good players in action. I've seen many of our departments stand strong. It has been a privilege to be a part. We're looking for the finish line, the goal in this great race. What follows is authentic. So the fact that you have enough courage to do so um, is, uh, is inspiring. And Dr. Ely, your presentation um, is uh, enough evidence to move forward. Um, I, I just want to, you know, I'll speak briefly as a restaurant owner, some of the challenges you, I'm sure everyone in here is aware of. Um, some of my <laughs> behavioral analysis uh, that's one thing that I do understand a lot is behavior. It's what I did my entire adult life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and some of the challenges that we may see coming as we, you know, the preliminary signs and symptoms have been coming through, but the ripple effect it, is so, so small right now um, comparative to what it will be and what it could be. Um, so when I, as I start, I'd like to just give a brief history because it's been such a long year. Um, just a brief history of what's happened and, and how we, where we are uh, in the, in the in, in specifically in the, in the business aspect of ones that have been shut down. 
Um, so on March 12th, Oregon had its first COVID death. Um, tragic. March 16th, uh, we, it was announced that we would be shutting down effective the next business day. Now, what did that mean for us? What did that mean for our citizens? What did that mean for uh, the people that you know and love? It meant that the night of March 16th, we had to sit down with all of them. We had to let them go. For us in particular, it was the day before our biggest day of the year, where everybody's excited, where everybody has anticipated, built up, prepared for, and then you get told with a few hours notice that you no longer have a job. St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day. And it was the, that was one of the most difficult days in my um, entrepreneurial career. Um, it, the, it's not even close. It was the most difficult day. Um, so we, we navigate. We were not prepared. Nobody's prepared, right? We had a few hours to prepare. So you don't have all the necessary needs to do a takeout on a, you know, all the, these things that are re required. So we start to fill our way, but we're on board. We understand, we're believing, we're, we, hey, we need to help this process. So it was, I mean, overwhelmingly, everybody was on board. Nobody questioned anything. Um, it was extremely, you know, at, at that point, it was two weeks to flatten the curve, all right? So by April, we were supposed to be back in business. And that's what we told all of our staff. And uh, April comes, it's extended another 30 days. So you, you have this sense of helplessness, right? That's starting to draw in on everybody. And, um, and, and there's nothing you can do. There's, I mean, there, as, you, as elected officials, nothing we can do. As a school board member, I was extremely frustrated because our kids weren't in school. And I know how devastating that portion is to the mental well-being of our children, needing the structure and the care that some of them only received during those hours of time at school. And we just don't have that. And um, the, I was really concerned of, of not only what was happening to our children, but what the, what the fallout was going to occur from this. So we get through April, we're told in two weeks, in two weeks, May 15th. So we're in week eight now of no business. Some take out, but mainly no business, no paychecks, no income. Now for, I mean, this, it's staggering, right? And we all understand that. <clears throat> On July 4th, the governor announces she's going to send out her entire teams to go audit restaurants. So they, uh, they audit 800 facilities over the 4th of July time period. The most busiest, the, the busiest time in the restaurant industry in the summer, right? Nine violations of 800 restaurants. Statewide. That is an incredible, incredible statistic amount of doing what we're supposed to be doing, right? So we, <clears throat> we get this information and we move forward. So <clears throat> we get closed down obviously again, just before Thanksgiving. And then um, again, during, the, dur during December and currently are open to outdoor and outdoor and uh, dine and, 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 ta and take out, right? So, but uh, another piece of data uh, that I'd like to share is the OHA tracks your, uh, the workplace outbreaks, right? This should be staggering. If, if, if we are an industry that has to be closed, that, that, that employs 9% of Oregonians, right? That is not a small percentage of our workforce. Out of the 75 businesses listed in the outbreak, two, well, three, if you include a fast food place, which we will, there were 5,351 counted in the outbreaks, workplace outbreaks. Of those, 27 came from restaurants. That's 0.005% of the workforce outbreaks were facilitated by restaurants over an, a period of time from May 15th to just before Thanksgiving, an enormous st a sample set 
where it could have been completely different, it proves that we were doing all of the work that we needed to be doing to keep each other safe and keep our each other employed. That, I mean, I don't know, between the information that Dr. Ely gave and, and the information that is available to us, because the, 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 the real concern that I think many of us share is that we have to go to these lengths that Dr. Ely's doing to get accurate information because it's not being provided, you know, as evidenced by the um, public records advocate resigning uh, yet, the day before yesterday, stating undue pressure for not being able to release documents. Like, we can't even get the accurate information unless you do these extrapolating data digs like Dr. Ely just did. So what I'd like to what I'd like to say is number 1 I hope you've you've heard every piece of information that you need to make an informed decision and I hope that you make a decision that benefits everybody who is your constituents right all 23,000 constituents So here's an important question did the virus bring us closer together you've likely heard the analogy and it is a good reminder, this is, for our generation, a World War II type challenge. Although like that tough time in history, tremendous opportunities have and will come. May I respectfully add, I believe because we wore masks, focused on public safety, and our people, our citizens did everything we asked them to do, Curry has one of the lowest percent of COVID positive case rates consistently in our state and Oregon ranks the sixth lowest in the country per capita for positive cases. Recap 2020 from one Curry Commissioner's perspective. Last September in Oregon, 2,300 separate fires ignited in nine days. 1.2 million total acres burned. The result, four times the amount of acreage of our 2017 Chetco Bar and 2018 Klondike fires combined. Towns disappeared. 22 deaths in Oregon and nearly 5,000 structures lost. Three-fourths of those were someone's home. I'll never forget during our September 8, 2020 meeting, I mentioned to our board that any moment I would likely be pulled for a very important call. Coos Force Protective Association Director Mike Robinson did call. I left the meeting and nervously stepped out into the hallway. Mike said, Court, are you sitting down? I said, no, but go ahead. Tell me what's going on, Mike. A big pause. He said, Phoenix and Talon are gone. Early assessment, likely 2,200 homes lost. My heart skipped several beats. Then I asked two words, people lost. He said, at this moment, we believe 90% barely, but miraculously got out in time. Thank you, Lord. Then I did sit down, doing my best to process, all before returning to the Bach meeting. Later, we also learned Douglas County, the community of Glide, lost 105 homes to our south border community of Happy Camp, California, lost 150 structures. Changing gears a little bit, Curry County is working very hard with, with the return of our local public health. Even before COVID, we've sounded and suggested the rationale for the vision to bring public health to the forefront, a funding top priority. Certainly in 2020, we learn it is more important than ever. I believe this board agrees and will work hard toward that crucial resolve. Last month, yours truly chosen 21 chairman of the Advanced Healthcare Community Advisory Committee. 2020, how about that? Last December, Curry turned 165. Okay, maybe that's not the biggest news, but here's one, our new Curry strategic plan of reality. Very expensive, but hope it lives up to the causes and objectives. As our job as commissioners is to work and do our best to see that through. Curry leads. Our Curry Suicide Awareness and Prevention Committee formed. Our Curry County Emergency Housing Committee formed. These two groups of wonderful citizens 
represent people with great skills and huge hearts, as do all so many of our volunteers, committees, boards, and council members. Curry, economic sanctuary work for our restaurants and small companies and supporting the Oregon State Chamber of Commerce Business Reopening Project. Curry leads. In late December, the Association of ONC Counties, AOCC, I feel my most important board, received great news. The decision of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to exclude all ONC lands from the nine and a half million acres previously designated by the agency as critical habitat for, yes, the northern spotted owl. This is the result AOC has been seeking for a long time and we are pleased this agency finally agreed with us, said Tim Freeman, Douglas County Commissioner and President of AOCC. This is a huge win for our 18 counties when it comes to sustainable timber harvest and a boost to consistent future county revenues from our valuable timber lands. Everyone is encouraged to remember, presently, we're harvesting only one third of the actual annual growth rate of our ONC lands. Our Curry planning and building departments are very well managed and setting impressive work and permit approval records. Curry leads. We vigorously worked with the Josephine County Commissioners, Del Norte County Supervisors, Oregon Department of Transportation, and the U.S. Forest Service to get our Highway 199 reopened sooner during the September Slater fire. Then remember on April 1st, 2020, personal protective equipment. We had essentially zero masks, gloves, and hand sanitizer in stock. To date, we now have stored away 21 tall pallets. A big thanks to the Stout family and our local Focus Industries. By the way, this Curry firm is now officially Oregon's biggest PPE supplier. A special thanks to Gold Beach Calvary Church for storing these supplies. Also, to Kyle Stevens and my fellow board members of Southwestern Oregon Workforce Investment Board for their tremendous help. Curry leads. By the way, don't hesitate to contact us if you or anyone you know needs any PPE supplies. Don't be bashful. Steve Byerland, Curry Salmon and Steelhead Recovery Coordinator. Steady and good progress for our three Rogue Basin counties and important work on the Lost Creek Reservoir hatchery improvements and upgrades. Curry leads. Curry County, two consecutive years with virtually no fires. On June 4th, 2020, with the help of the Association of Oregon Counties, set up an important teleconference. People from all over the state. We put together a 70 minute discussion and plan with key firefighters, including Region 6 Forester Glenn Casamasa, who is responsible for 17 national forests in the Pacific Northwest. He greatly contributed. Curry leads. Our Brookings Head Start Remodel Completion. This project is a terrific benefit to our Curry citizens, especially in South County and their families. Curry leads. The Flores Lake land swap finalized. Additional protection for a most special place on our planet. Chetco River Bridge, tremendous homeless trash cleanup, great jobs done by our roads, sheriff, and code enforcement departments. Curry leads. Yours truly elected chair of the Association of Oregon Counties District 4 Southwest Oregon Committee. Curry, Jackson, Josephine, Coos, and Douglas Counties. Curry leads. Dying to stay in Curry, this wonderful hospitality program offers our visitors and travelers incentive to find and enjoy our unique eateries. Curry County in the city of Brookings. Perhaps our biggest bragging point, Curry County Sheriff Deputy Sergeant Jason Thien received a National Law Enforcement Award recognized here by United States Attorney Bill Williams. Curry proud. Our Oregon Department of Transportation, a big thank you for their Highway 101 work in North and South County. Yes, Milepost 312 and the famed and feared Huskanaden properly repaired. Fabulous work, ODOT. I dare anyone to try and spell Huskanaden. We started rest. 
R-R-E-S-S, our Rogue River Estuary and Sediment Study. Through river docks and the Oregon State University Extension, <laughs> gets me on the river on occasion, my new nickname is Dr. Sonar. Certainly the credit goes to State Representative David Brock Smith. His 2019 legislation sent $486,000 to Curry for this important research, plus the work for our salmon and trout recovery. Our board passed a proclamation declaring 2021 the year of solidarity for Curry veterans, service members, and their families. Sudden Oak Death and the Gorse Action Group, invasive species eradication work, proud to serve on this very important Coos Curry combined effort. We remain relentless. Reese Across America honoring veterans, our courageous soldiers, all gave some, some gave all. It was an incredible privilege and honor to speak to vets that rainy day in December. Work with our Curry Economic Development Department and travel Southern Oregon coast, improved visitor promotions and good progress, Curry leads. Our Wild Rivers Coast Forest Collaborative, the Shasta Agnes Landscape Restoration Project approved after four and a half years of very diligent work from my fellow WRCFC board members. Our board passed our law enforcement, public safety and first responders resolution of support. Curry leads. Proclamation is now honoring eight different veterans to date, including World War II veteran Charles Bartlett, who turned 100 last December. All with their history, incredible sacrifices made. Our soldiers lead again. Growing in 2021, our future is bright. First, there are numerous current bills during the Oregon 2021 full legislative session that I can talk about, but here are just three in particular that offers good optimism for our rural county. RSR, FTC, Rogue Siskiyou Regional Fire Training Center, slow but good and steady progress. I testified just last Tuesday via Zoom before the Oregon Veterans and Emergency Management House Committee. Representative Brock Smith's House Bill 2667. We are very encouraged as this bill would appropriate $450,000 to the State Forestry Department for distribution to our fire training center. Someday, maybe soon, we'll be training firefighters every level from all over the Western United States. To date, we've already raised $140,000 in grants and pledges. Curry leads. House Bill 2654, Rural Broadband Connections, Coos Curry Electric Co-op taking a huge lead, a strong Curry County supportive role. House Bill 2435, grant writing. Due to our Curry Economic Development Team, we are catching up. This bill requires the Oregon Business Development Department to distribute monies in Oregon Rural Capacity Funds to Oregon's Economic Development Districts for purposes of assisting rural jurisdictions to apply for and administer grants. We have confidence in finding the perfect combination for a Curry grant writer and COVID recovery coordinator for our county. Last month, yours truly was appointed to the NACO, National Association of Counties, Hewlett Foundation funded wildfire mitigation project team. Curry leads. Offshore wind power generation, ocean, Oregon Coast Energy Alliance Network. I'm proud to serve on this important board where former Oregon Secretary of State Bill Bradbury also serves. Coos and Curry counties have a chance to lead the entire Western United States in marine renewable and clean energy. Our Curry Anti-Violence Freedom to Assemble Resolution. It's planned, we'll bring it before the board soon. Curry leads. The future combining of all central Curry fire districts and for continued vigorous fire awareness, prevention, suppression, and recovery, hopefully will evolve toward the same path for the rural fire departments in North and South counties. Our collaborative forest landscape restoration grant for our Rogue Basin counties, Curry, Josephine, and Jackson, we're slowly moving up on the list, $40 million over a 10-year period for critical fire fuels abatement. 
I've spent considerable time on this and I know we'll, we will prevail in the long term. Curry leads. Doing our part to help our South Coast lumber mills with 480 employees find and compete for important timber contracts. A new Curry logo, something that has salmon, trees, rivers, mountains, and ocean combined. Looking for board approval soon. Started a renewed relationship with the Oregon Restaurant and Lodging Association. Looking forward to our third Zoom call this Thursday with Orla and other commissioners from around Oregon. The Medford Mail Tribune published a new feature story about the North American native species and the Wild Horse Fire Brigade. A reasonable number of these fabulous animals need to be returned to the deep parts of our Curry backcountry, reducing both tax burdens and volatile fire ground fuels. We're setting noise standards, Curry as a preferred peaceful place to live, encouraging the respect shown by, for, and to our neighbors. Curry leads. Curry consumption, 2% tax, 1515 plan, opportunity to bring in badly needed new county revenue. That will keep property taxes lower and shift a balanced and equitable burden to everyone, including our visitors and out-of-state shoppers alike. Curry leads. Our new Curry County Courthouse and Jail. Note the sheer magnitude of what it will cost, recent noteworthy repairs to the courthouse already made, and the reality of what it will take to eventually complete undaunted. We are moving forward and toward a valid plan. Future vaccine distributions, Curry Public Health, Curry Health Network, Curry General Hospital, Curry Medical Center, Advanced and All Care Health, Coast and Curry Community Health, cities of Port Orford, Brookings, and Gold Beach, all coming together to serve and succeed, fully taking advantage of everything we've learned this past critical 11 months. Curry leads. Foster parenting, a major Curry County push for public awareness and volunteerism. Every child deserves a family. Our generations following are counting on us. Protecting our farmers and all citizens' water rights from potential state and federal overreach and overregulation. Curry leads. Lobbying Salem in Washington, D.C., Curry commissioners must dedicate time in working outside our county for important policies and legislation needed to aid our citizens. In August, Langless turns 140. Langless leads. One of his most famous quotes, Albert Einstein, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is never stop questioning. So we know if we don't wisely learn from the past, we'll sadly repeat it. That's not leadership though for the people so trusting in our good judgment. Brace yourselves with a vigorous resolve to control cost as leaders, as commissioners, I believe our responsibility is to call out big spenders, slackers, and push back against anything that is not fully grounded in truth. Here's to a safe, secure, productive, and solid problem-solving new year. 2021 is a lucky number. God bless our first responders. God bless our teachers, fellow co-workers, and Curry employers. God bless the USA. God bless Oregon and Curry County. God bless our seniors, family, and our kids. God bless our veterans. Thank you.